Uh, howdy, CEOs, and welcome back to Pear Talks Prun. Uh, before we jump into this list, I know you've been kind of maybe thinking to yourself or, I don't know, worried as to where I've been. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've kind of been all over the place. Um, so while I've been gone, I've been busy hammering away at a new official tutorial for this game. And as many of you are probably aware, the old tutorial series is, well, it's kind of old. So the devs hired me to write and record a new one. But that's not the only thing. If you like podcasts uh, just as much as I do, you can actually come and join me and uh, my co-host Lex at Pear Talks Prun Podcast. I know, a lot of alliteration there. And it's simply an open format podcast where we dive into the nitty gritty about everything Prosperous Universe. Uh, we have a lot of fun recording it. And we publish almost about two and a half hours of content a week. So that's pretty much where all my content's been going. But that's not all. Um, I'm also here to formally announce that I started a financial institution within the game. Uh, yeah, so it's called Nascent Financial. And so if you're looking to hit the ground running, uh, come on down to Nascent Financial where it's a great place to get a loan. But you probably aren't here for journal of my antics. You probably want to know five things I wish I knew before starting playing Prosperous Universe. So without further ado, let's start with number one. All the starter professions are balanced from a game design perspective, but the markets will imbalance these various starts greatly. So when I first started, it was sort of a no-brainer that fuel would be this great start. Everyone needed it, and obviously people still do to this day, <sighs> but it took a major crash. And had I joined during that crash, I'd probably be in a far worse spot than where I am today. Is that the fault of anyone? Well, no, it's probably just really how the markets are. So what can you do? Well, unfortunately, this game prevents you from looking at these markets before you make any of these pretty major decisions within the game. So here's my instructions to navigating this. Step one, close your eyes. You got them closed? Okay, good. Step two, now click really rapidly through the startup process. Now step three, now take a couple hours. Well, okay, f first open your eyes again. You can open your eyes at this point. Um, but then, now take a couple hours and then research the markets, but with the intention to understand if market price action is like a long-term trend or if it's more of a short-term trend. And then finally, if you find a market that seems stable enough, put up an empty tile and type in the command click. That's C-O-L-I-Q. It essentially resets your game from the beginning again. Now, armed with the knowledge that you now have, you can make a more informed decision about how to start the game, which is pretty major for your first month of playing. Alternatively, you can actually watch my video guide about the secret profession to quick wealth and disregard everything I just said. Now, on to number two. Slow down. As much as you might be really excited about this new game you found, this is such a unique video game that it'll pretty much make your brain do corkscrews because your dopamine hits that you normally get from most gaming will be much fewer and far between in, with this game. Like, so running a corporation has allowed me to get to know some just amazing people. But alas, one of the things I've seen like time and time again it's just like really excited players burn out really quickly. And I'll admit at no fault of their own, the game ramps up on an exponential curve. At one minute, you could be waiting weeks for something to happen. And then at the next second, you quit your job, your mother wonders why you don't call her anymore, and you wake up in the middle of the night in a fugue state wondering whether you forgot to set your production ratios right. All this to say, this game is weird in that the carrot on the stick is attached to a really long stick. Some recommendations for how to beat the boredom of the start of this game would include using Prunner to map out your space empire. So Prunner is a fantastic tool that a lot of the experienced players use to map out bases and planetary empires. In my opinion, it's one of the best tools available to both new and old players to sort of understand the next steps you will take when getting some cash. Now, another great recommendation I can make for beginners is to use a tool that one of my corp mates built called Prosper. It was made by a gentleman by the name of Bedtime. Now, it's a fantastic tool to map out production chains and see where everything goes. So if you want a project that will probably take you a very long time to figure out, diving into the craziness that is how to build a ship is definitely the way to go. Number three, watch your import and export weight. 
Although it won't be a big deal at the beginning, you will start trading eventually on massive quantities of goods. And an issue presents itself where you run into a logistical bottleneck. Now don't worry, it happens with everybody, but how you deal with it will determine the scalability of your operation. I'll kind of give you an example from one of my own experiences. See, I had a situation where we were mapping out one of our fuel bases on Katoa. And so I did what is known as a vertical pure refining setup, where essentially I planned to build nothing but refineries on my base. Now, this meant that I would ship the ammonia, the gallerite, and the hydrogen to my base, and then continue to produce massive quantities of fuel. However, little did I know at the very beginning that gallerite would be super heavy and the hydrogen would take up just an absolutely insane amount of volume. So with left with this dilemma, I had to kind of scale my operation in a more appropriate manner with respect to volume and weight that my ships could hold. So as much as you would like to shove as much space lettuce in your ship as possible when flying away from the CX, space lettuce takes up space. And as Pythagoras once said, A squared plus B squared equals only a thousand heads of lettuce can fit in this spaceship before you have no more space. Okay? Number four. For all that is good in the world, join a corporation. Don't worry, I see you looking at me like that. Don't, don't think I don't. I know what you're thinking. What is space lettuce? Well, I'm here to tell you it's lettuce, but in space. But really what I'm here to do is to share the good word about getting plugged in with a corporation. There's a great handful of corps out there in the universe, and getting involved with them is a great way to stay connected in the game and keep your ear to the ground for any developments that might be affecting the larger universe as a whole. Now, I'm not here to talk about the end game, but I can tell you right now that the end game is fairly difficult to do without being in a corporation. And I know some people would argue and say I'm wrong, and that's fine, but I know where I'm going for an end game, and I can tell you that some of the most complex building projects will require the use of a corporation or group of people to get this thing done. Now, I will warn you right now, however, that not all corporations are the same and they can actually differ wildly from one to the next. It's kind of like we were all given like a can of Play-Doh to play with, but everyone was given a different cookie cutter mold to use. I know in most MMOs, you kind of get a general sense of what a guild or clan does, but not in Prosperous Universe. You see, in Nascent Mercantile, we are headed after shipbuilding. But other corporations might be a resource to offer their members discounts on a variety of commodities. While other corporations might exchange great chili recipes, or read books together and discuss them on a monthly basis, or even play Settlers of Catan together or something like that. Anywho. Number five. Research, research, research. There are some things I have been so tempted to share with you folks, but I have kept my mouth shut. Because I know that if I were to discuss them with you, the markets might not like me very much. But there are some things in this game that work on massive multipliers and all they require is a bit of understanding and know-how how to make. And then you can start swimming in large sums of currency. To give you an example, it actually wasn't until we started doing research and mapping out a production chain for one various commodity, and I won't name it, and we were kind of discussing avenues of potential growth when we found that this certain commodity could produce people over 48 million in cash if done correctly. And there were certain elements of the market that could actually facilitate it. Now, early on in my career with Prosperous Universe, I was actually able to strike some deals with players by offering them to ship products for goods that they were looking for on the CX. So what I would do is I would find a really, really good trade deal. Then I would secure contracts with players that had bids on the CXs and essentially create sort of a quasi short contract with these players to give them the resource straight to their doorstep. It was a win-win because I got to ship the product for a great price and they got the product right at their door. Now, it was honestly a great method as well for securing these trades that eventually would exist by the time I got and showed up at that planet because that was also a huge issue for me. All I had to do was just a bit of talking and understand where people demanded these trades I was making. 
Now this kind of leads me to my bonus point. Don't worry, no extra charge, but it is about this game. Hop on the Discord. This is an MMO for Pete's sake. And if you aren't on the Discord or don't know how to get on the Discord, don't worry. There's no time like the present. Hop on the Discord and find out about the great prosperous universe communities that exist on that platform. And I would argue that probably three quarters of the game actually exists on Discord. And so if you aren't on it, get on it. Any of you folks, I hope that sheds some light on some of the mistakes I've made throughout this game. And I really appreciate all your support in subscribing, commenting, unsubscribing, telling me I'm wrong, and writing in various chat channels about my videos in this weird sea pair character. It means the world to me that you came to this fantastic game through my videos or podcast or any other medium I create. All I ask is that you phone up your grandmother and then tell her you love her. And then you need to mail the URL of this game to her. I would actually find it so <laughs> I'd actually find it so funny if someone's grandmother joined because of me. Any of you folks, till next time.